I've never made a bandsaw box before, and I wanted to give it a try. And to maintain my typical modus operandi, I tried to dream up a rather complex one for my first attempt. It'll be a round box with a roll top lid, and there should be enough room down below to add a small drawer. And to improve my chances of actually making one that looks good, I decided to make three of them and hope that at least one of them turns out well. All right, let's see if I can figure this thing out. First thing I do is cut down all the various pieces that I was going to use to make up the three blanks. I chose to make one out of cherry with ash and walnut accents, a mahogany one with ash and walnut stripes, and lastly, another made from jara with a stripe of bird's eye maple. I was told jara is an Australian hardwood, but I didn't hear any accents, so I don't know about that. Once they are all dry, I could square up one side on the jointer. Then, using that side as a reference, I could square up the rest of it over at the chop saw. Now it was time for stencil number one. I printed them off, cut them out, sprayed on some craft adhesive, and then slapped it down onto the blank. I got things set up on my bandsaw, and then I could make my first cut. I should mention, I'm using a 3 16 4 TPI carbide tip blade in the bandsaw, which is really what you'll want to use for a project like this. I cut just on the outside of the stencil line, since I found it easier to sand down to the line rather than to magically conjure up more material. Then I could lop off the bottom back over on the bandsaw, and once I got that cut off, I flattened things back up over at the sander. Now for the first vertical cuts. I set the fence to a quarter inch and I take the sides off of each blank. Then it's time for stencil number two. I line it up and stick this one down onto the blank. This one has a spot for an optional relief hole to be drilled as well, so I quickly do that over at the drill press. Then it's back to the bandsaw to cut out the roll top section. Now that the top is cut out, I can sand things smooth again and then cut two more slices off of the sides again. I use the top piece as a support, but I position it off to the side so that I don't accidentally cut it too. At this point, you might be getting a bit confused as to what's going on, but don't worry, it, it'll make sense soon enough. And next, I cut the top open and I trim the lid to its final length. Then over at the sander, I can take off all the bandsaw marks and smooth things out on the lid piece. Stencil number three is for the main part of the box. This is where you can store all of your toenail clippings and any other really important things that you need to keep safe. I clean things up a bit on the spindle sander. And now I'm ready for my first glue up. I stick together the two sides I cut off each blank to form the runners for the roll top lid. It's important to get them lined up precisely so that the lid will operate smoothly once it's all done. And when it's dry, I chisel out all the glue squeeze out and then I sand the runners smooth using one of the cutouts from before. 
I flattened the faces on the disc sander and now I can glue on the front of the box. Adding a little salt for flavor. Lining it up perfectly and clamping it to dry. Stencil number, what are we on? Four? So this one is for the little drawer on the front. Now it would have been smart for me to take note of the grain direction before sticking on the stencil so that I could hide my entry cut kerf better than I did, but oh well, another lesson learned. You'll see what I'm talking about shortly. Now to hide those kerf marks, I just fill it in with a shim on the front, but it really helps if the cut is oriented in the same direction as the grain. When done correctly, you can flush trim off the shim, sand it smooth, and the kerf all but disappears. Now I can cut off the front and the back of each drawer. Here's the one for the Jara box, the mahogany one, and lastly, the one for the cherry box. Stencil numero cinco. This one is to hollow out the inside of the little drawer. This cut has some sharp curves, but what's nice is that you don't have to worry about staying on the line since we're just hollowing it out. With that in mind, I take out as much as I can on the first pass and then make lots of little cuts to work my way up to the line. Afterwards, I clean things up the rest of the way on the spindle sander until they were perfect. Now I can glue on the fronts and the backs of the drawers. It's always good to have fronts and backs on your drawers, otherwise you might get a draft. or arrested. Next step is to trim the roll top lids to their correct width. So I measure them against the thickness of the runners and slice off a strip from each side. And since the lid has a little curl on the end, I have to trim off a tiny bit so that it'll slide in the grooves. You could just as easily do this with a chisel too if you're not comfortable doing this on the bandsaw. Now for the point of no return, gluing on the backs. I was careful to use a real thin coat of glue along the runner so there wouldn't be any squeeze out inside that I couldn't clean up afterwards. And once things were all lined up, I clamped them up for the night. <laughs> The next day, it was time for the fun part of flushing them all up on the disc sander. Yeah, believe it or not, this sanding was a lot of fun. It's just so satisfying to see everything flush up and all your glue lines disappear. I put an eighth inch round over bit in the router and softened all the edges on the box. And then again on the drawer face. Then it was time for the not so fun part, the fine detail sanding. But I got everything nice and smooth by sanding up to 220. Using the cutoffs from before, I made some tiny matching handles for each box and then used some CA glue to put them onto the lids. And with a plug cutter, I made some small drawer poles as well and fastened them on the same way. I masked off all the spots that were going to get flocked and then sealed them with a coat of shellac to keep the wood from absorbing the adhesive. And then I could smear a bunch of this black goop all over those areas. I got my flocker loaded up with all the fibers and went to town blasting that stuff all over the glued surfaces. I made sure to hit it from every angle and to go overboard so that everything got a thick coat. About 24 hours later, I could remove the tape, take care of any touch-ups that were needed, and then apply some finish. 
And for that, I just used several coats of Danish oil. I cut some squares of felt out of my neighbor's pool table and then used some craft adhesive to affix them onto the bottoms of these boxes. After it was glued on and the edges were trimmed, these boxes were done. Check out that sapwood to heartwood transition. And I just get lost in the grain on this one. And crikey did this one get dark once the finish was applied. So which one do you like the most? Let me know down in the comments below. Is it the Jara, the Cherry, or the Mahogany? If you'd like to build this box for yourself, I'll have step-by-step -step plans and stencils available on my website, so be sure to check that out. If this is your first time here and you've enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and check out my other stuff. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. just peeled right off. Do I even need this? <laughs> I don't even need the heat gun. <laughs> okay. Ow. Oh man. Intelligent move.